All right, so I wanted to clarify some confusion on curbless showers, especially when it comes to linear drains, like the drain channel drains that take up a whole area. There's a lot of confusion when it comes to setting them um, in an existing bathroom on a second floor uh, and basically on how they're configured. So one of the issues is, is most pictures that you see, at least clients of mine that end up uh, coming to me with pictures of what they want to have in their bathroom. You always see the big drain on the back side of the wall here. So it goes from wall to wall. It just looks like all this nice, beautiful, long, big tile that comes straight into the bathroom. Well, it's a little bit more complicated that, than that. And I want to explain to you with these shower pans of why um, a lot of situations you can't put that linear drain on this back side without raising the floor height of your outside bathroom. So we'll start with the, lar the large linear drain. So this is made by Schluter. And as you can see, the profile of it slopes in one direction. So we're basically at a minimum size. So it goes from basically 15 16 all the way to inch and a half. And this inch and a half measurement is what causes the problem. So most linear drain or most curbless shower systems require the subfloor to be cut out of the area and recessed to be even with the existing joist. So as you can see here, we're now three quarters inch lower in our shower area. Basically took out the plywood and we recessed the plywood to even with the joist. So now you can see, if I try to put my linear drain on this back wall, now obviously this, this, this shower is a little bit bigger than what this pan is depicting, but imagine if your wall ended here and you wanted to have a linear drain. Now you can see how much height there is. We have almost an inch of height now that we're gonna to have to build up this floor to make it curbless. Otherwise, you're just gonna have a step. That's pretty undesirable. Most of the time, you're not gonna be able to afford that whole other inch because keep in mind, you're still gonna have tile on top of this. So you're really gonna be about an inch and a half higher than the rest of the floor. So most of the time when you have hardwood flooring or carpet or something like that, you just don't have the, you can't afford the height. You can't, you, maybe half inch at most three quarters of an inch you can handle, but an inch and a half, you're gonna have a funky step coming into your bathroom. So the solution to that is to basically turn the pan the other way. And we're gonna have the channel drain right at the entrance of the shower. So now that this can just go indefinitely higher as we pack mud or whatever, we could just continue that slope as long as, as we want to make the shower. Another confusing thing that I always get questions about is you see the linear drain on the shower faucet wall. Uh, it shows a bathroom walking in uh, and basically being curbless and having the linear drain on the shower portion. So I'll show you why that's a problem. So here is a Schluter shower pan that tapers down to one end to put the linear drain. But as you can see, look at the height difference from one end to the other. Now this is a 60 inch shower. This is basically, if you took out your tub, this is the size shower you would have. And you can see at one end, we have almost two inches. Yeah, two inches from this end, tapering down to about seven eighths of an inch. So now when we install it, if we were to install this like this, and you wanted to enter into the shower, now you can see that big wedge issue. This is pretty much, I mean, this is almost like you could possibly trip over this ledge at this point. Uh, now, granted, you're gonna have a little bit of tile in here, but you would not wanna be able to raise this entire floor an inch and a half. By the time you're done with tile and everything, you'd be almost two inches higher on this outside floor. And most of the time, that's not gonna be acceptable at the transition of the doorway. Now they do make, a system that allows you to cover that edge. But basically, it wedges with the pan system, and then you can tile this into place when you're doing the floor tile. And this will cover the edge of that wedge. Again, 
this type of situation would most likely be a trip hazard. I mean, an inch and a half um, is doable, but I would personally not um, install the pan like this. But they, they do have a solution to this to, to cover that whole edge.